Out of My Mind by Sharon M. Draper, Chapter 10. Penny wakes up every morning asking for her doodle, a soft brown stuffed animal that might be a monkey or maybe a squirrel. It's so beat up, nobody knows for sure what it really is. She drags it everywhere. Doodle, she cries if it's been caught in her blankets. Doodle, she cries if it's right next to her. Of course, it sounds more like doo-doo when she says it. That makes Dad crack up. I smile when I hear footsteps outside my door. Big ones and tiny little ones. My mom and Penny. And Doodle, of course. Sometimes my legs and arms are stiff from being in the same position all night. I'm supposed to tingle. My bedroom door opens. Denver gets around to fixing that squeak. Mom traces a finger along my cheek. Maybe she's checking to see if I'm still breathing. I am. I open my eyes. I wish I could say, good morning, but I just grin and said. She pulls me up, hugs me, rarely stopping to sit in the rocking chair anymore, and rushes me to the bathroom because I usually have to go really bad first thing in the morning. Penny trails us, wearing a huge red and white hat like the one in Cat in the Hat. The girl has made your hat obsession, and always with her doodle. Butterscotch is never far from her. She lets Penny put hats on her and somehow endures Penny's hugs, which can sometimes feel more like chokeholds. I've gotten a few. She barks to alert mom or dad if Penny gets too close to an electric plug or the front door. Our bathroom is painted ocean blue and is large enough for Penny, Butterscotch, me, and mom, and my chair without feeling crowded. That's a good thing because we spend lots of time in there. Penny and I make pretty big messes, but at least I don't have to wear diapers. It's bad enough that someone has to put me on the toilet, but diapers, yuck. Even though the doctor said it would be impossible, by the time I was three, my mom had me potty trained like any other kid my age. I hated sitting in dirty diapers, and she hated changing them. So I figured out a way to let her know that I had to go, and she'd hustle me to the toilet. Mom and I can sometimes talk without words. I point to the ceiling, and she somehow just knows whether I'm talking about the ceiling fan, the moon, or the dark spot where the rain leaked through during the last thunderstorm. She can tell if I'm sad, and she can sense when I need a hug. She rubs my back and makes me relax when I'm tense and upset. She tells me dirty jokes in the bathroom sometimes when Dad isn't listening, and we both crack up. One morning, as she was getting me dressed for school, I pointed to her stomach and then covered my eyes if, as if the sight were too much to look at. It was shortly after Penny had been born, and she still had a good-sized baby bulge. You calling me fat, she asked, acting insulted. I laughed a little and said, ugh, which is the closest thing I've got to a yes. Take it back, she said, tickling the bottom of my feet. Instead, I held my arms out like I was making a big circle and laughed out loud. Huge, enormous, like an elephant. I could tell she knew what I was thinking. We both rolled with laughter, and then she hugged me tight. I wish I could tell her I loved her. Mom knows when I'm hungry or thirsty and whether I need a glass of milk or just some water. She can tell if I'm really sick or simply faking it because sometimes I do pretend I don't feel good just so I can stay home. She can tell what my temperature is just by feeling my forehead. She only uses the thermometer to prove she's right. I can tell stuff about what she's thinking too. By the end of the day, she's been at the hospital all day, then fixed dinner, then bathed Penny and me and put me in bed. I can tell she's kind of reached her max. She breathes hard. Her forehead is sweating. I sometimes reach out and touch her with my hand. I can feel her calm down, and she'll trace her fingers along my cheek, just like she does in the morning, and give me a kiss every night. Every Saturday morning I've been fed, after I've been fed, Mom reads the newspaper while she has her coffee, and Penny smashes bananas on her high chair tray. Butterscotch doesn't like fruit, but she stays close by, just in case someone drops a piece of bacon. Mom's off on weekends, so she relaxes. She sometimes reads articles to me or tells me about the latest hurricane or uprising or explosion in the world. More fighting in the Middle East, she says. I've seen it on TV. Bombs and tears and faces of fear. There's a new Superman movie coming out soon, she reads as she snakes the newspaper flat. Maybe we can go catch a matinee. I love superheroes. I guess Superman is my favorite because he can fly. How great would that be? Mom also reads me the comic pages. I like Garfield. Garfield is cheating on his diet again, Mom says. I ate John's lasagna last he ate John's lasagna last night and Odie's meatballs. I laugh and point at Mom's hips. Are you calling me a fat again, Miss Dee Dee? 
Just because I finished off your spaghetti last night? I grin. You'll be sorry when I start feeding everybody lettuce for lunch. We both laugh. Mom's not even close to being fat, but I like to tease her. For my 10th birthday, I got a whole book of Garfield cartoons. Now that's what's up. I made Dad read it to me over and over. Garfield is a cat who has a lot to say, but all his words are written in little circles above his head. He can't really talk, of course. He's a cat. But sometimes that's how I feel. Like it wouldn't, wouldn't it be cool if I had someone to write the words over my head so people know what I'm thinking? I could live with that. Large floating bubbles above me, speaking for me. Wouldn't it be cool if someone could invent a bubble talking machine before fifth grade starts in a couple of weeks? Ha! When I try to talk, the words are exploding in my brain. But all that comes out are meaningless sounds and squeaks. Penny can say lots of words and pieces of words, but my lips won't come together to make even the simple sounds like that. So most of my noises are vowels. I can say uh and ah pretty clearly. But if I concentrate, sometimes I can squeeze out, squeeze out a buh or a huh. But that's it. My parents can usually figure out what I need just by listening carefully. To outsiders, I probably sound like one of those children who was raised by wolves. My communication board, even with everything Mrs. V has added to it, well, it sort of sucks. For example, one afternoon earlier this summer, I had a taste for a Big Mac and shake. Vanilla. I love fast food. Mom wasn't home, and getting my father to figure out what I want is something, is a big job. I pointed to the picture of my dad, the word go, the word eat, and a happy face. That's all I had to work with. I got to give him credit. He tried. He asked me a million questions so I could point to yes or no. Are you hungry? Yes. Okay, I'll fix you some tuna salad. No, I pounded on the tray. I thought you said you were hungry. Do you want some spaghetti? No, gentler this time. So what do you want? No answer. Nothing on my board could describe it. So I pointed to go again. Do you want me to go in the kitchen and cook you something? No. Do you want me to go to the grocery store? No. I was starting to get upset, pounding on the board with my right thumb once more. I don't get it. You said you wanted me to get you something to eat. Yes. Once again, I pointed to Dad's picture, then go, then eat, then happy face. I could feel one of my tornado explosions starting. I started to kick, and my arms got all tight. It was driving me crazy. I couldn't tell him that about a big, stupid Big Mac. Calm down, sweetheart, Dad said softly. My jaws felt like steel bars. I knew I was breathing hard, and my tongue wouldn't stay in my mouth. I hit my board once again, aiming at no particular word. Ugh, I screeched. I'm sorry, Melody, but I can't figure out what you mean. I'm going to fix you some noodles and cheese. Will that be okay? I sighed, gave up, and pointed to yes. I calmed down while he cooked. Noodles, noodles were pretty good. A couple of weeks later, my dad and I were in the car, and we passed by McDonald's. I screeched and kicked and pointed like Godzilla was coming down the street. Dad must have thought I was nuts. Finally, he said, would you like to stop and get a Big Mac and shake for dinner as a treat? I shouted, ah, as loud as I could and kept on kicking with absolute delight as he pulled into the drive-thru. He never did make the connection between my fast food stop and my request a couple weeks earlier, but that's okay. Even though it took us an hour to finish, it was one of the best hamburgers I'd ever had.